good morning kapoor sir good morning anand good morning good morning dr martinez good morning how are you i'm fine thank you thank you i'm fine thank you also thank you very much so we will just wait for a minute and then we will start okay ha uh, could you in the meantime please share your screen so that we know that everything is fine okay okay yes we can see good okay so uh, shall we start yes okay good morning everyone so today we have a, a special uh, faculty on uh, jaipur surgical tutorial so just to give a brief uh, background of jaipur surgical tutorial to dr martinez uh, this is a online education and teaching activity which we started uh, two years ago uh, which is primarily meant for the fellows or the post graduate students in uh, surgical gastroenterology and hpb surgery so we do this session every saturday 9 to 10 indian time and my colleague dr anand nagar he has been coordinating this activity for the last two years and i am happy to announce that uh, till date more than about uh, 300 uh, faculty members teachers and uh, students have uh, joined this activity and uh, we do these sessions in various forms usually there are case presentations by students they also prepare an operative surgery session which they present and both these sessions are moderated by the faculty or the teachers and sometimes we have presentations by the faculty also so dr martinez this is a, a classroom teaching like activity so please uh, 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 um in between uh, i may interrupt you and ask you some question on behalf of the students and then in the end also we will allow the okay. students to ask you any questions okay. uh, so with that uh, background uh, dr martinez is one of the okay. senior uh, uh, members okay. of the international association of surgeons gastroenterologists and oncologists from uruguay um, i have met him in several asco meetings and he was on the faculty of the jaipur surgical festival when he came Uh, with his wife uh, and visited us and i hope to see him uh, more and more times uh, he has been in, in to india also several times and i hope to see him again uh, this year and uh, following years over to you dr martinez please thank you thank you very much thank you very much good morning and um, thank you for giving me to the opportunity to be in india many months ago for me it was an amazing cultural and scientific experience um you are a very very warm human group and very high scientific level uh, and i learned i learned a lot um today i would like to talk about the surgical management of the most serious evolutionary form of the acute pancreatitis which is a necrosis pancreatic from the perspective of those of us who started our experience in the era of open surgery and with less knowledge of the disease than we have at the moment um acute pancreatitis is now the, um since uh, many many centuries ago <laughs> uh, galeno uber in the 15 in the 15 um, century but uh, was uh, redinal fit from from boston that uh, communicate the first report uh, about the the this uh, disease uh, after that pancreatic necrosis has been uh, out since um but um is um considered a serious disease due its an uncertain evolution high morbidity and mortality under the diagnosis and therapeutic challenge the result 
have improved in this last 30 years and the spans and of an evolution from open and aggressive surgery towards the exclusive treatment of uh, pancreatic collagen through mini-invasive treatments. You can see in this uh, old video a technique uses in the 18th, uh, called marsupialization, which consisted in performing a wide necrosectomy and leading <laughs> the lesion of mental sac open to the outside. You see the, the operation there. Is what proposed at that time for infected necrosis with better result than 55 mortality than other techniques at that time. Um, in the same time, in 18, uh, inclu inclusive was performing pancreatectomies to eliminate, eliminate the necrosis, but we you see here in this communication in our country with very, very poor results. We have a uh, um, very, also very poor result with open techniques and repeat laparotomies and uh, we had very high mortality due to the difficulties in the management of complication of very aggressive surgery but um, also in international literature the results were poor with uh, a mortality between uh, 15 to 18 percent and also a high number of complications as well well, as unfunctional sequelae did to resolve, especially at the level of the abdominal wall. Uh, in the end of the period, uh, it was clear that the, the result of the open and more aggressive technique were worse than the closed, more conservative technique, which had few, few fistulas, few bleeding, and few relaparotomies per patient with associated with a better cyberware. Thirty years later, there is still a central point for the management of the good pancreatitis. It's the impossibility to establish which patient will evolve to severe necrosis or who will become infected. This is the basis of the permanent search of diagnostic and therapeutic consensus and limitation of the guide's expert consensus and severity predictor score. This keeps the debate on management strategies with the acute pancreatitis and the complications of acute pancreatitis. The clinical evolution, you can see this slide, of acute pancreatitis was remained unchanged. The rate of evolution to severity and collation formation, as well as the infection of necrosis, remain uncertain. And depending on the experience of the group that treat them, the global trend is to decrease the mortality by mini-invasive mini techniques um, approach, uh, surgical approach by mini-invasive techniques. For any case, the mortality associated with infected necrosis reach 50% of the cases. Pancreatic necrosis is a late evolutionary complication of acute pancreatitis. A more than four weeks, approximately, it is an heterogeneous encapsulated collation with fluid content and necrosis in different proportions, proportions a most required uh, drainage. Uh, here you see the open necrosectomy that uh, had, has a, a high mortality and a morbidity. You see in the in the right in the right side the the, the numbers of the mortality between between six and twenty five percent, almost uh, 90, 95 percent of the morbidity. This is the uh, nowadays is called this um, this form is uh, now called but wallet of uh, pancreatic necrosis. It, it, it is that is a very important and interested form of evolution of the acute pancreatitis 
because is it that the object of the treatment and the surgical management is very important. Today, based on accumulated experience, experience, we believe that the main indication for surgical treatment is the drainage of the encapsulated necrosis is the WOMP, the wall of a pancreatic necrosis, infected or without signs of infection, but with symptomatic. We evacuate this uh, in both uh, forms, symptomatic and infected. This patient should be treated with a multidisciplinary team, but specialists who allow the adequate management of systemic support treatment, syndrome of systemic inflammatory response, nutrition, infection control, and sudden on deal with a, a surgical risk uh, is a, an opportunity and a technique appropriate, appropriate uh, and progression for the minimum technique and open surgery if necessary. Two points are important to is 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 strategic uh, the of strategic importance. The first point important is the link with systemic nutritional support and infection control, which allow the latent surgical treatment for 30 days, 30, 30 days or, or, or more. Because delaying necrosectomy decreases the mortality. That is a very important concept. And the second point uh, is that there are not definitive treatment according to the clinical res result obtained. Progress is made in invasiveness facing of therapeutic failure. That is, the co that is called a step-up approach. You can see many, many examples. Here, the, the puncture aspiration technique in, in two modalities, guided uh, by ultrasound or by CT scan with an unrate success of the 56% and an mortality the 70%. This um, this slideshow and the, the same technique by transgastric and percutaneous um, punction guided by CT and drainage one peripancreatic necrosis mass. Uh, you can hear um, the 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 puncture uh, on the on the the necrotic mass and and the and the um, right side you see the uh, stomach the the puncture through the the stomach that is the the scar after many days of the puncture some authors the standard treatment for infected necrosis is open or laparoscopic drainage it's clear that the solid collation can be can cannot be evacuated percutaneously by fine drains, and therefore the laparoscopic approach is indicated. Uh, this is an example of a step-up approach. Infecting necrosis was drained by percutaneous ultrasound guide as bridge to laparoscopic surgical necrosectomy through the left lateral retroperitoneal approach after 35 days due to a persistence of the infection. That is the sequence the, of treatment in different stage of the evolution of the, 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 the pancreatic necrosis and the acute pancreatitis uh, disease. Another example, this is a very, very severe acute pancreatitis with primary shock and he underwent surgery, an emergency surgery, and a bullet to peritoneal infection. You can see a massive, uh, and you can found a massive necrosis, a, a intra-abdominal necrosis, and the, the, the patient was uh, dead almost immediately. It's a very dramatic situation, but uh, for lucky, exceptional also, no? Uh, another example of a step-up approach 
in three steps. Ultrasound, sorry. Uh, uh, okay. Ultrasound is a guided percutaneous um, drainage. Then, uh, then laparoscopic evacuation of the necrosis. And finally, we perform an gastrostomy, gastrostomy due to the persistence of the infected retrogastric collation. Uh, you see in the CT scan that is very, 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 uh, very important. It's very important the 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 collection in the in the retro in the in behind the in in the lesser lesser sac in the uh, and, and destroy the 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 pancreas is evidence. Uh, the persistence uh, was uh, important uh, here uh, is the, the technica uh, transgastric we performed the, with a suture a mechanical suture we performed the communication the fistula between the stomach and uh, retroperitoneum we associated the cholecystectomy because all, all, all of the of, of this uh, acute pancreatitis for us is uh, the uh, biliary etiology um, here another example of retroperitoneal laparoscopic necrosectomy after failure of um, after failure of um, percutaneous drainage, a big collision also you can see here. Uh, here is the drainage is no no well placed. Um, uh, the approach is indicate this type of approach is indicate in central pancreatic collision. Mm, you can see in the same, but it's an approach very discussed. Um, I I don't um, well vision of it of it because increased a lot for me the risk of peritoneal uh, contamination uh, because this, the the spread the the for the risk of a spread of, of the, the necrosis infected necrosis. I believe that central collisions can be evacuated well through the retroperitoneal left uh, approach uh, by the BART, BART techniques. Uh, here is the, the technical. The technical. This is the mesocolon. This is the the root of mesent of mesentery mesentery. Here is the aspiration. Here is the necrosis. Is and this one is clean the cavity. Uh, the less uh, the less sac uh, omentum less sac is uh, clean. Um. For finally, this is our, our small experience in Uruguay. You must consider that in my country we have only three million people inhabitants. Uh, it's not India. <laughs> With an, um, and for us, with nutritional support, infection control, and mini invasive technique applied in the strategy to step up approach. We we have a significantly improved of our result um, in three times less than uh, thirty years uh, ago. And for finally, um, and to think, uh, mini invasive surgery, percutaneous or laparoscopic, is safe. is unsafe procedure, but requires a state adjustment to patient selection, selection and training of the surgical team. A general surgeon with an ultrasound training and management uh, as, as a guide uh, to, are training to perform this procedure with excellent results and, and, and with an additional advantage. In case of some potentially, or, or, or in case of some complication, 
of, of the procedure which requires a surgery, an urgent or emergency surgery, the patient benefits from the therapeutic management by his surgeon who has a full knowledge of his disease. That is, I, I, I think, is very important also. Uh, thank you very much um, um, for your attention. This is my country. Um, if you like, uh, come here. I were happy of receiving of, of receive you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Uh, so um, I would just uh, repeat a few points which have been made by Dr. Martinez, which are important for uh, the students, not only for their exam, but for the management of patients also. But you have to understand that there are basically two peaks of uh, mortality in uh, acute pancreatitis. The first peak occurs in the first uh, one or two weeks where it is basically basically because of the systemic inflammatory response syndrome. So at that time, it is a medical issue, which is due to multiple organ dysfunction, multiple organ failure. So treatment is by and large supportive organ support. The only exceptions are when there is bleeding due to erosion of a vessel, which may require intervention, or if there is necrosis and perforation and peritonitis because of uh, involvement of an adjacent organ like colon, DJ flexure or duodenum. The second peak occurs when there is severe acute pancreatitis, there is pancreatic and peripancreatic necrosis which then gets infected as was shown by Dr. Martinez that once there is infection in the necrosis, the mortality increases from 5 to 10 percent to as high as 15 to 50 percent. So infection of the necrosis increases the mortality to a great extent. So these are the points which have to be kept in mind. And that is why whenever you see a patient with acute abdomen, especially acute upper abdomen, there are three important steps. First, you have to establish that this is acute pancreatitis. Second, you have to assess the severity of acute pancreatitis, which earlier was mild and severe. But now there is a category of moderate also, so mild, moderate, and severe. And if it is severe acute pancreatitis, you have to see whether there is necrosis or not. So necrosis can only be identified by a contrast and on CT scan. And then you have to see whether the necrosis has got infected. So earlier, the only way that we could say that the necrosis is infected by was by fine needle aspiration and gram staining and culture. But now more and more groups are moving away from that. We are using the other criteria, the non-invasive criteria to find out whether the necrosis is infected or not. Once the necrosis is infected, it was said that all these patients require some kind of an intervention. But that dictum also is being questioned because now there are several reports where even patients with infected pancreatic necrosis who are otherwise stable and improving on conservative organ support treatment have uh, survived. So uh, uh, you need to select out cases, some patients, small number of patients, of course, even with infected pancreatic necrosis may be treated with conservative non-interventional treatment. Now, when we say intervention today, it doesn't always mean surgery as used to be 30, 40 years ago. Now, as Dr. Martinez said, that the standard treatment approach for severe acute necrotizing infected pancreatitis is what is known as a step-up approach. That means you start with the most less invasive treatment, which is percutaneous. So if there is a fluid collection and you think it is infected, patient has features of sepsis, or if it is causing obstruction to a viscous, then this fluid may be drained percutaneously, either direct entry into the collection or, depending on the location, percutaneous transgastric drainage. So just that can improve the septic status. It can improve the organ function. Second is endoscopic. Now, endoscopic is largely for retrogastric collections. So, a good therapeutic endoscopist can go into the collection 
transgastric then they can dilate the tract they can even place what are known as lumen opposing not opposing opposing uh, metal stents and through that stent the scope can actually go into the cavity and they can even remove solid necrotic debris percutaneous drainage is mainly for fluid but endoscopic trans uh, gastric approach you can even remove solid necrotic material so even necrosectomy can be done now endoscopically the third approach which dr martin has very beautifully highlighted was the retroperitoneal approach video assisted retroperitoneal debridement ward that is best suited for collections or necrosis which is mainly in the tail area but as he said even in the mid body area but definitely as you move more towards the head it becomes technically difficult so a good radiological imaging to show the location and the nature of collection and then first you will have to do a percutaneous catheter placement the tract is dilated and then the same tract is used so you go posterior to the <coughs> colon and uh, evacuate the fluid remove the necrotic material and then leave drains for irrigation so that is the retroperitoneal approach the advantage is that you don't contaminate the peritoneal cavity <coughs> now depending on the location of the collection or the necrosis you could also use laparoscopic approach which is more suited for uh, uh, infracolic or even lesser sac because you can approach the lesser sac through the transverse mesocolon laparoscopically so to the left of the middle colic vessels there is a relatively avascular plane and again guided by imaging you see where the collection is bulging and you could do a laparoscopic <clears throat> and very few cases today will require a laparotomy a formal laparotomy for either drainage of collections or necrosectomy and that is usually for multiple or multi loculated so multiple sites or multi loculated uh, uh, collections which would require a formal laparotomy so these are various uh, steps in management of infected uh, pancreatic necrosis so i th think we will now start taking the questions dr martinez there is a question in the chat box uh, dr shrimal one of the students he wants to know that which has a more severe course of necrosis alcoholic or biliary acute pancreatitis in your experience yes um can you uh, you can repeat the the, the question please uh, kapoor yeah the student wants to know that which has a more yes. severe natural course uh, whether alcoholic uh, ah. or biliary acute pancreatitis yes um, first of all the 87 70 80 um, percent of the acute pancreatitis are mild um only 20 20 30 percent um uh evolue to to the severity and down then of, of it i am I, I think i 10 percent um, of pancreatitis evolve very quickly to severity with shock, uh, syndrome of inflammatory, uh, and this, this, in my experience, this type very severe of the acute pancreatitis evolve to death. To death uh, it is uh, it is uh, impossible for 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 me offer a this patient and surgery that um and 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 disease does that in this stage is basically an a disease an inflammatory disease of the pancreas uh, uh, that started an inflammatory stage of the all the the the, the patient and that is a very very difficult to 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 treat it um Include included in the inclusive in the in the United Care Unit. This is the the most severe uh, experience that I have in in acute pancreatitis um, 
the severity of acute pancreatitis. I don't know if I respond to the question. Rajen, do you want to take that? Yeah, uh, I think uh, we have uh, reacted differently at different decades. I have been through the whole process of pancreatic necrosectomy. We tried the open approach initially. We tried the closed approach. We found that the closed approach was safer when an open pancreatic necrosectomy was required. The only contraindications that we followed was if there was a visceral fistula, in which case we opted for an open up approach. The uh, uh, complication rate is much higher. You get spontaneous fistulas, you get uh, bleeds, etc. And systemic organ failure is the commonest cause by which the patients die. Now, however, this new technique, I have tried in few patients with catheter uh, insertion. And you can evacuate necrosis over time if you irrigate the catheter. We used to put in two catheters, uh, one dependent and one coming from above the collection and do an irrigation that used to work as well. Uh, it still continues to be a very morbid disease with very uh, severe consequences. Unlike in the West where uh, patient stays uh, the, uh, is financed by the government, it is a different matter. But I have observed about three or four patients when I was in the UK where the stay, median stay of these patients was about six months in the hospital undergoing various drainage procedures. So I don't know how practical it is for us. And we have to take each case by its uh, merits. And uh, uh, majority can be managed. Majority are uh, more mild. Only in 20% of cases, we need to do uh, necrosecting. Thank you. So going back uh, to the question asked yeah. by Ankur, um, I am not sure whether there is a, a definite evidence in the literature to say that which group has more uh, severe uh, course of the disease. But from practical management point of view, it doesn't matter because as a group, even if you know that one group has a more severe course as compared to other, what is important is the individual patient. So in an individual patient, you will have to assess the severity for which there are uh, so many uh, clinical, investigative, and radiological criteria. Then, if it is severe acute pancreatitis, you have to find out whether there is necrosis, either parenchymal or peripancreatic, which you can do only by contrast-enhanced CT. And if there is necrosis, you have to decide whether it is infected or not. And uh, that is what will decide, number one, the indication for intervention, the location primarily, and the timing will decide the type of intervention. And at timing, as Dr. Martinez said, now almost all pancreatic surgeons agree that you should try to delay the surgical intervention as far as possible. So you try to buy time, uh, of course, initially with conservative management or organ support, then with non-surgical methods, percutaneous or endoscopic. So you drain whatever you can non-surgically, try to buy time. The necrosis should be become what is known as a walled off pancreatic necrosis. Walled off pancreatic necrosis means a collection of primarily solid necrotic debris, but also with some fluid, which is well localized, which has a well-defined wall, which is easily drainable into either externally or preferably into a viscous. So if it was mainly peripancreatic fluid collection, APFC, acute peripancreatic fluid collection, it will evolve into a pseudocyst. If it was acute pancreatic necrosis, it will evolve into a walled off uh, uh, collection. So uh, which group has more severe disease may be important theoretically, but from practical management, it doesn't help. Now, second question is from uh, Pranay Gupta that how would we suspect perforation? Now, perforation, uh, as we know, could be generalized or localized. Generalized perforation means features of peritonitis. Although you must remember that some patients with acute pancreatitis, even without perforation, may have diffuse peritoneal signs. In fact, one of the differential diagnoses of acute pancreatitis clinically is acute peritonitis. So sometimes it may be difficult. Or it could be localized when it presents with features of 
a localized infected collection, which is like an abscess. So clinically, it may not be possible. You can only suspect. And that is why when you do a CT scan for uh, acute pancreatitis, it must always be done. Of course, it is a contrast enhanced CT because that only will show necrosis. But at, at the same time, you should always give oral and rectal contrast because the three or or uh, common sites where the bowel can perforate are <laughs> colon, transverse colon, DJ flexure, duodenum, and stomach in that order. Now, time when perforation occurs is very variable. Some patients may have a very early perforation because that is ischemic. There is end arthritis because of inflammation and there is ischemia and necrosis of the bowel. So that will happen very early in the course of disease. And that is, as I said earlier, one of the indications for an early intervention. But if you suspect gangrene and perforation of the bowel, then that is an indication. Or it will occur in the infected pancreatic necrosis stage when the viscous, the colon, the DJ flexure, the duodenum or the stomach, they are forming a part of the wall of the necrotic cavity. And that is when the bowel gives way and uh, because of the th thinness or thickness of the bowel, it is colon, DJ flexure, duodenum and stomach in that order. Uh, so you, you have to keep the possibility always in mind. In fact, when you are doing a necrosectomy, if you find either based on imaging or based on operative findings that the transverse colon is forming a part of the wall of the of the necrotic cavity, in some cases, even without an evidence of perforation, you probably will do a proximal diverting do pileosmy because you don't want a fistula to manifest later. So even a preventive uh, 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 loop ileostomy in a high suspicion case where a large part of the colon is forming uh, a wall of the uh, necrotic cavity may be indicated. So you have to keep the possibility of a perforation always in mind. Usually, usually it is a localized perforation. Very rarely it is perforation causing generalized peritonitis. Yes. Um Excuse yes, me. Dr. Martinez, please. Yes, thank you. Yes, it's very, it's very important to 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 be conservative with the the necrosis and reach and timing between inflammatory symptoms, uh, the effect, the necrosis sterile or infected. And the um, necrosis and the effect, the mass of the of the necrosis uh, o, o, uh, o, o, over the, the stomach. That is, um, I, I, I think that is uh, the, 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 the 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 un the, the unconservative attitude is very important. But what is the limit of the conservative infection? fistula and bleeding that is clear para mí, for me that is clear for me that change the the change the tactical the strategy and go to the uh, the surgery uh, the control the control about the control i think the images is very important uh, is very important but also the control of a uh, uh, of a uh, uh, stage of infection the infection and nutrition as the, the two factors for me more important to support the, the necrosis and go to the necrosis and stage of the womb. Uh, maybe the majority of necrosis, I agree with a colleague that say that, the majority of necrosis don't, don't require don't require the the the, the, the drainage except in a stage of the womb. So the the attitude is personalized for each uh, patient. I, I, I think that is the difficulty and the challenge. Thank you. Any other student? Any other question? 
the other important complication which you have to always keep in mind is the group of va vascular yeah somebody wants to ask anything iphone you want to ask anything is no. vascular complications arterial and venous arterial yeah. is a pseudo aneurysm so you have to keep that possibility in mind uh, of course clinically it is very difficult unless there is uh, say a sudden dramatic fall in the hemoglobin because of for rupture of the pseudo aneurysm into the necrotic cavity causing a large bleed but usually it is uh, detected or uh, suspected on uh, imaging so when you do a contrast uh, ct you see uh, a hyperdense uh, lesion in the wall of the cavity in relation to one of the vessels usually splenic gastrointestinal or other adjacent arteries and uh, if you see a pseudo aneurysm in a patient with acute uh, uh, severe acute pancreatitis even if it is not bleeding at that moment of time even if you don't see blood in the necrotic cavity the pseudo aneurysm has to be tackled and the treatment of choice for a pseudo aneurysm is radiological intervention in the form of embolization so coil embolization if the pseudo aneurysm is very large you will need a large number of coils to obliterate it which increases the cost and in that case a direct percutaneous ultrasound or ct guided puncture of the aneurysm and glue obliteration because glue is much cheaper some radiologists may do that but the treatment of choice is coil embolization even if you are going to operate upon this patient you must treat the pseudo aneurysm before operation by radiological intervention you should not think that okay when i am going to do necrosectomy i will handle the pseudo aneurysm it is very very difficult to do that one is if it is small to localize it second even if you are able to localize it the treatment is that you ligate the vessel proximal and distal so in the wall of the necrotic cavity the tissues are very friable very edematous sutures will cut through so you should not say that i will not uh, do radiological embolizations surgery is required or is indicated only if radiological embolization is not possible for whatever reason or if it has failed to control the bleeding and then you must remember that you have to take the artery both proximal as well as distal to the pseudo aneurysm so surgery is not the treatment of choice <laughs> second is venous venous is usually in the form of thrombosis splenoportal thrombosis but this is a reversible process once acute pancreatitis settles either on its own or after intervention the veins will in majority of cases recanalize and no intervention would be required so just the presence of splenic vein thrombosis in acute pancreatitis does not become an indication for splenectomy you may even see some collaterals at some stage in the follow up but in most of these cases the splenoportal thrombosis will settle on its own without requiring any intervention yes may i intervene sir yes rajesh yeah one more thing to realize is uh when you look at the aneurysm is how close is it to the origin of the splenic artery if it is relatively close to the splenic artery origin then it is important to embolize by coil and by glue both of which are being used in hyderabad and uh, but it's the more distal aneurysms you can try to resect uh, or doubly ligate on two sides and leave it alone okay yeah so uh, as is true of pseudo cyst yes, also please. normally pseudo cyst uh -huh. yes please dr martinez no no uh, about the, the the vascular complication <clears throat> i i think we have uh, we have lucky today uh, because we we have a um, we have um, <coughs> a station because the the hemostasis the direct hemostasis by open surgery is is a really very difficult and i i think is a factor of uh, of more complication and and death for the, the patient the vascular complication today i think is mandatory to to resolve by by embolization by radiological way 
eh, the problem is a portal vein. When the portal vein is open, but the, the necrosis is um, um, because the necrosis is, is very rare. So I, I think I agree that it's very rare. But the situation of the portal vein open in the environment of uh, acute pancreatitis is really a dramatic situation. And for me, very difficult to resolve because the, the bleeding is uh, uncontrollable. Uh, is uncontrollable uncontrollable uh, um, yes really uh, and surgery that finish with the life of the patient in, in the in this case eh? in, for, for lucky is exceptional okay yeah the point which dr desai was saying that if the lesion uh, pseudoaneurysm is uh, say at the extreme tip of the tail of the pancreas now uh, for pseudocyst also <clears throat> We know that the conventional treatment of pseudocyst is internal drainage. But if the pseudocyst is located at the tail of pancreas, then distal pancreatectomy, including the excision of the cyst, also is an option. So same way, pseudoaneurysm, what you were saying, because if you're going to go in, then uh, uh, distal pancreatectomy, including the pseudoaneurysm, especially if the aneurysm is related to the uh, distal most part of the splenic artery or one of the branches of the street splenic artery, that, that could be a surgical option. Now, there is a question that how to suspect a pancreatic tuck disruption in pancreatic necrosis. If we send the fluid amylase level of a peripancreatic collection, will the amylase be raised? Yes. Invariably, the peripancreatic fluid in acute peripancreatic fluid collection, APFC, the amylase level will be high because of the inflammation there is usually ductal disruption, but it is usually minor peripheral third or fourth order ducts which are on the surface of the pancreas. So invariably the amylase level will be high. But it does not mean that it is a clinically significant ductal disruption. As the inflammation settles uh, uh, with or without uh, intervention, uh, this fluid will get resolved and uh, you may not require any intervention or if there is a major ductal disruption, the fluid collection will persist and over a period of four to six weeks time, it will become well localized. It will have a wall, which is actually a wall of granulation and fibrotic tissue. There is no epithelium. Yeah. That is why it is called a pseudocyst. It is a cyst, but it is a pseudocyst. Normally, a cyst has an epithelial lining and it will evolve into a pseudocyst. Now, you must remember that pseudocysts following acute pancreatitis irrespective of size or their age may resolve will resolve in most cases spontaneously so the earlier dictum of six month uh, six weeks six centimeter size you have to intervene does not hold true if the cyst is asymptomatic if it is not causing any significant obstruction to a viscous gi or biliary tract you can and if there is no sepsis you can observe and follow. Majority of the cysts following acute pancreatitis will resolve on their own over a period of time. If the cyst is massive, if it is enlarging, if it is symptomatic, if it is causing obstruction or compression, <coughs> those are the indications for intervention. Now, there is an entity called <coughs> disrupted duct syndrome where there is a complete disruption of the pancreatic duct. So if there is a major ductal disruption, then obviously the fluid collection or the ensuing pseudocyst will not resolve. It will either remain static over a period of time or it will even enlarge and that becomes an indication. Now, if you are doing an internal drainage of a pseudocyst, whether there is ductal disruption or not, it doesn't matter because the, everything will drain into the viscous. But if there is a complete disruption of the duct, the ductal disruption syndrome, then the distal duct, duct distal to the disruption, especially if there is a stricture formation at that level, may be high like chronic pancreatitis in the distal body and pancreas. So in those cases, you may either have to stent the duct. So a good therapeutic endoscopist if he or she can pass a guide wire from the proximal across the disruption into the distal duct and then place a stent, then the 
fistula will stop like any other fistula or if you are going in then depending on the pre operative ct or mr findings you may have to do a lateral pancreatic ejectostomy in the distal body and tail of pancreas so ductal disruption syndrome not a common phenomenon but you have to keep that in mind and that you can diagnose only by a pancreatic ogram an mr pancreatic ogram or an endoscopic Rajin, any experience with ductal disruption? I I think I remember. Couple of patients I had. To... Yes. Couple of patients I had. One developed a spontaneous internal fistula, and what happens to him is every six months to eight months he has abdominal pain. And in the initial period, I used to do imaging, and imaging would show that there is a complete transection of the pancreas, uh, just distal to the tail, about five to six centimeters. If I would wait for su uh, sufficient amount of time for that to be more symptomatic, it would actually resolve. So he keeps having these episodes of pain, but otherwise he is not manifesting any problem like a cyst. So I have left him well alone, uh, not interfered unless it's necessary. Because I found in my early experience when I used to try to interfere, try to re uh, formally resect the pancreas, it was a formula for disaster and literature also said the same thing. Uh, resection of the pancreas in the background of acute pancreatitis is a very hairy affair because the stitches in the vessels just don't take. Hello. So I used to use ethibon number 5 to ligate the vessels, uh, hoping that they wouldn't cut through. But only a couple of experiences, never more than that. Uh, yeah. In the asymptomatic people, I don't do routine screening. I only do an MRCP at 6 months to check if there's anything going wrong with the duct and leave it well alone. Mostly gastroenterology colleagues are able to dilate the stricture and put it stent across. Yeah, so in the acute phase, no uh, direct surgical procedure either on the pancreas or on the pancreatic duct, except that if it is uh, going to be a distal pancreatectomy, because then it is little safer as compared to internal drainage. So distal pancreatectomy also is an option depending on where the major pancreatic duct has got disrupted, how much of the uh, uh, tail and distal body pancreas will be sacrificed because obviously uh, you are making the patient more prone to endocrine and exocrine uh, insufficiency. One point which Dr. Desai mentioned, uh, uh, students you must remember, is the spontaneous rupture of the fluid collection or pseudocyst into a viscous. That is something which has to be kept in mind and that is why Whenever you are operating on a patient with pseudocyst, please get a immediate pre-operative, at least ultrasound to reconfirm that the pseudocyst is still there. It has not ruptured into a viscous and spontaneously resolved. It has happened uh, uh, with us at least on two occasions when on the morning of surgery, uh, there was no cyst at all. It had already ruptured into a viscous. Okay. So, um, one, uh, uh, since we have a few minutes, uh, uh, about the surgical technique of necrosectomy. Now, as we, uh, Dr. Martin has mentioned earlier, that you try to delay the surgery to as far as possible, uh, at least four weeks, maybe six weeks, maybe even later, so that it becomes a walled off pancreatic necrosis. The advantage is then the necrotic tissue has got demarcated from the viable tissue. So, it comes out. Second, the bleeding is less, chances of leaving behind necrotic tissue are less, and chances of recurrence will be less. The technique of necrosectomy is, it is called necrosectomy, which means uh, resection, but actually it is not resection because you don't, use, you don't have to use any sharp instrument. You don't use knife, you don't use scissors, you don't use any uh, energy source. What you use is blunt dissection. And it, it could be suction, vigorous suction. It could be your finger. So just put your finger and take out what comes out easily. It could be a gauze piece mounted on a sponge holder. So you scrape the cavity with that. It could be that you take a dry sponge, put it inside the cavity, move it around and then take it out. So whatever can come out easily, which means that is the necrotic material, it will come out. On the other hand, if you try to dissect with a sharp instrument or an energy source, 
you are very likely to get into the normal tissue. And once you get into the normal viable tissue, one, there will be bleeding. And second, because this necrotic cavity is usually in the lesser sac. So as I said earlier, the transverse colon, the splenic flexure, the duodeno-jejunal flexure, the duodenum, the stomach, they are forming part of the wall of the cavity. And you can actually cause a fistula if it was not there or if it was impending, then you hasten the process. So that is why if you have done a necrosectomy, it is always a good practice to instill some methylene blue or gentian violet stained saline into the stomach, yodnam and DJ through the Ryan's tube and if possible, even into the uh, colon to make sure that you haven't caused an opening into one of the viscous. Obviously, you will leave drains and if you see something suspicious, then you know. And that is why, as I said earlier, if you strongly suspect that colonic wall has got thinned out or it has got a doubtful viability because of the uh, involvement in the necrotic process, have a low threshold for creating a loop uh, diverting ileostomy. You will save more patients by doing that than by uh, not doing a ileostomy and then having a colonic fistula. Colonic perforation is one of the most important predictors of mortality for uh, yes. One Kapoor. last comment I wanted to make was on uh, no. drainage tubes and their management. So it's very difficult. It is important to look for that sentinel bleed. If there is a sentinel bleed, immediately withdraw your drains uh, an inch or so and see if that comes under control. But we have a very low threshold for angioembolization in these patients. Very important point. If you see blood in the drain, which was not there earlier, even if it is small in amount, obviously commonest cause is that the drain has eroded into the granulation tissue, but keep the possibility of a sentinel bleed in mind. Sentinel bleed means small bleed, which stops on its own, but it is a harbinger of a major catastrophe occurring later. So that should become an indication immediately of a CT angio to detect a pseudoaneurysm. And as I said earlier, if it is found to pseudo to coil embolize it. Dr. Martin, as you wanted to say something. Yes, no, uh, um, uh, and a small opinion. Um, the, the most important for me in the necrosectomy technical is um, be carefully. Be carefully with the with the necrosis. With the necrosis is, is solid, no problem because it's, it's well delimited. And I can to to evacuate it uh, without more problem. The problem is a liquid or solid with liquid, and with an environment of abscess with pus. Um, that is the problem. I, I, I think it's not necessary to evacuate to evacuate everything. Um, when it start a small bleeding, we we must stop. Uh, we must stop. Uh, because um, the, the 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 tissue, the granular tissue, that the bleeding usually by we we have in the granular in the in the granular tissue, and it, it, for me is a is a factor of uh, indicate of, of of a stop in necrosectomy. And second, um, the, the, that is, I think, is, is is the most interesting to to comment. And the second is, I have always, always, I live and drainage uh, in the cavity. Uh, always, uh, I I live uh, a drainage in the cavity, and drainage and long time. Eh? With I no no, um, I can't uh, need. To, to retire the, the, the drainage um, in the few days. No, no. It may be the, the, the drainage um, uh, with the patient is, 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 is fine, is well, and almost uh, to discharge it, retire the, the, the drainage. Because I think the drainage is a way to, to of access to the cavity in, in case of the complication or reinfection or or other complications. No? That is my, my opinion about the technical um, of the necrosectomy. Thank you. So I think uh, uh, 
with that uh, we will uh, close this session so dr martinez i forgot to introduce my colleague dr rajen desai uh, he is uh, one of the senior surgeons in uh, hyderabad and my other faculty colleagues are here please say hello to them dr anand agar and dr okay. good morning dr marias a pleasure listening to nice you to today meet you. good morning sir nice to meet you. <laughs> And, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Martinez, for uh, accepting our request and invitation uh, to join this uh, tutorial. Uh, you can please pass on. Uh, I don't know what time it is in Uruguay at this time, uh, but please pass on this uh, link to your students. They are most welcome to join these teaching sessions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for the for the invitation. And it was a very, very good pleasure for me to participate in this, uh, in this uh, activity. Thank you very much. And thank you for using the Jaipur Surgical Festival picture in your uh, first slide. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Rajin. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will close. Yeah.